I'd like to start the uh, January 23rd, 2014 by a monthly meeting of the Kenner City Council. Uh, if everyone would please take their seats. Um, Aye. Councilman Brannigan, would you like to lead us in the prayer, the prayer please? And Let us bow our heads and remember we're in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we gather here before you, we have so many people that we need to remember in prayer. We want to pray um, for our police officer who was hurt in the line of duty this week, that you uh, heal him and protect him uh, during this time and all of our police officers. We want to pray for the families of those who have passed away. Uh, longtime Kenner Public Works uh, worker Albert June White, who passed away recently, Ernie Candelora, the grandmother of one of our colleagues, Mr. Joe Stagney, his grandmother May Moe, and for uh, one of our city employees, Robert Tellock's father, who passed away. We ask that you be with their families as they grieve their losses um, and that you comfort them at this time. And we want to pray for all of those, so many people who come tell us um, of their loved ones who have passed away, that you protect those families of our friends and our colleagues and all of our citizens um, as everyone has been touched by death and, and it's a difficult time. And we want to, again, pray for the safety of those who protect our city, our policemen and firemen. In your name we pray for all these blessings. Amen. 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 Councilman Reno, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to you. <clears throat> Madam Chairman, you have a quorum this evening. In accordance with Council Resolution Number B14550, please be advised that all cellular telephones, pagers, beepers, and other devices of this nature must be deactivated or silenced throughout the Council meeting. Madam Chairman, this evening we've received a request to amend the agenda to include Item 3A. At the request of Council Member Carroll, Application Number 1792-14, a public gathering permit for the purpose of the Zulu mayoral 2014 flag raising. Okay, motion by Councilman Carroll, second by Councilman Brannigan to suspend the council rules. All council members, please vote. I might add, is there anyone in the audience who objects to this? Please come forward now. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Okay. We have a motion by Councilman. Uh, do you read it first, Natalie? No, I just read it. I just need okay. a motion to add it. Ooh, okay, we have a motion by Councilman Carroll, second by Councilman Brannigan, to amend the agenda to include item 3A. Again, if there's anyone in the audience who objects to this motion, please come forward now. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to add item 3A. Under the consent agenda this evening, we have item one, approval of minutes, the regular council meeting of January 9, 2014. Item two, approval of alcoholic beverage permit applications. We have nothing. Item three is approval of bingo and public gathering applications. Item three A is a public is application number 1792-14, a public gathering permit for the purpose of the Zulu Mayor 2014 flag raising. Item four is Correspondence reports from the mayor, CAO, or department heads, we have none. Item five is acceptance rejection of bids requiring an expenditure of less than $5,000, we have none. Item six is change orders requiring an expenditure of less than $5,000. Item six A is a resolution approving change order number one to the contract with Fishhurts Electric Company Incorporated regarding the replacement of playground lighting at Susan Park Playground to increase the contract amount by $4,357.68 and the contract time by 56 days for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item seven is acceptance of committee findings for final passage, we have none. Item eight is resubdivision ordinances for final passage, we have none. Okay, the public appearance agenda. Uh, I need a motion and a second for the consent. Okay. okay, motion by Councilwoman Brannigan, second by Councilwoman DeFranches. Please vote. 
Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Under the public appearance agenda, this evening we have item nine, public hearings. We have none. Item 10 is opening of bids. We have none. Item 11 is reclassification for zoning. For final passage, we have none. Item 12 is other ordinances for final passage. We have none. Item 13 is resolutions and motions by council members. Item 13A is a resolution approving the appointment of Lewis G. Grunts, Jr. as interim city attorney for the city of Kenner. Madam Chairman, we received a request to, for one meeting deferral. Okay. Motion by Councilman Brannigan, second by Councilman Stagney for one meeting deferral. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 13B is a resolution authorizing the administration to accept the Municipal Water Pollution Prevention Environmental Audit Report for the period of December 1st, 2012 to November 30th, 2013, and to inform the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality that the following actions were taken and additional actions will be taken by the City of Kenner Council. Motion by Councilwoman Brannigan, second by Councilwoman DeFrancis. Councilman, Councilman Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just a quick question. Within this report, it says that uh, uh, the lift station at Maria and 10th Street was uh, in the force main project was put on hold. Can, can I just get some information on that? I think we are we still conducting some studies on that particular station so that we can determine the scope of work. So if, if it was put on hold, it was for that reason. Okay. But and it's, still, it's still part of the program. Okay, and, we, and we've done significant work all the, all, over there already, correct? That's correct. Okay, and it doesn't mean that it's canceled in any way. Let, no. let, me, let me further comment, and I know Lee has been working with this, but there's, there's some s significant right-of-way discussions that uh, Lee can probably elaborate more than I can. But with the uh, airport? Yeah, and we've had, actually we've scheduled a meeting with the airport to uh, get their permission on, on, on some of that. So um, that, that's part of the problem, is the way that the force mains are gonna go through. So that's sort of delaying it a little, little bit, but we, we do have the meeting scheduled okay. with, the, um, with the consultant and the airport. All right, thank you. Councilman Dinopoulos. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I guess this is basically, a, I mean, a report card that we send in the DEQ because of the loans that we have with them and the corrective action that we've had to take over the last year and a half, basically, two years. that we get based on what we have done during the course of the year. Okay, so tell me, how, how are we faring with our report card? Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna let Gayard or Violia, okay, great. you know, give you a, a little input as how we have fared compared to previous years. Uh, correct. Because we, we have done a significant amount of improvements <laughs> right. you know, over the last two or three years, you know, with the sewer program, and we still need to do a substantial amount more before we are totally completed. Right. I, I'm going to let Viola answer so that question. Just so the public knows, I mean, to date, I mean, just off the top of your head, how many millions of dollars in projects and sewer projects have we done in the city of Kenner since we got the DEQ loans and the... Well, uh, I, I can answer that before J.R. proceeds to uh, talk about the report card. As far as projects that have been completed, we probably have completed about 21 projects, uh, totally totaling $15 million worth of work. Under construction, we got eight projects going on, uh, totaling approximately $11 million worth of work. And then under design, we got about 11 or 12 projects being designed, two of which are the wastewater treatment plants, and those are the two biggest projects yes. that are, are really gonna benefit the program. And, and the waste treatment plant, remind, because of, I mean, we're talking about the residents in the, in the Grand Lake area, there is gonna be some odor control improvements out Absolutely. there. And I'd like to know, I, I mean, I'm looking at, at a government document, and typically most government documents confuse me, okay? Council, um, can I add one other thing? Yes. Um, we also, don't forget, we put, the city put up about $10 million before all of this started on top of those loans, so that's in, the, in that grand total, that's, you know, right. that's added to that total. 
and we tried to get the LDEQ to come to this meeting. They will probably be at the next meeting to basically okay. tell y'all, you know, this administration as well as the previous has been doing a very good job keeping up with this schedule and de getting things done. I mean, they're very happy right. with the progress we, we've made and we have them scheduled to come talk at the next meeting because they could not do this meeting. Right, thank you, Mayor. No, I mean, no, I mean, I, I mean, we've taken on that initiative. This is back, you know, to, to, to correct, corrective action of all the sewer issues that we've had. I mean, we're basically almost forced to do it and of course we should have done it anyway because of neglect over the years in the system. And, and, you know, this is, I mean, I, I, what, $60 million, $70 million worth of work, I think, by the time we get done with it, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's what we kind of voted on. Exactly. And basically where we are, and I mean, and, and, and I guess when DEQ looks at this report card, I guess you, since Veolia Water does this for a lot of municipalities around the country, I mean, how does this, the, this report card fare? That's what I'd like to know. It's, it's a lot like a credit score, but in okay. reverse. Uh, you want a low number, not a high number. There's several items on this MWPP for the city of Kenner that will never change and have not changed. I went all the way back to 2006 and looked at those uh, MWPP reports that we have reported in the past. Uh, overflows and bypasses has always been 100. That has never changed. That is a, it's a, it's a nature of the beast for where we are. We're below sea level, very flat land. We have 78 pump stations. We have the capacity to move 55 million gallons of water a day through those pump stations. D, L, LDQ says greater than five overflows is 100 points. I don't know that the city of Kenner can ever reach that just due to the amount of volume that we move. Um, the other one is ultimate uh, disposal of sludge. The capacity of the wastewater treatment plant does not have enough digestion space. That's an engineering issue. Um, and again, for the last, since 2006, has always been a 50. There's nothing we can do about that. It's a design issue. The only ones that, and to give you an issue, uh, or an idea of where we are in relevance of 228 total score of where we were this year, uh, in 2006, we were at 227. Um, in 2007, we were at 182, 2008, 170. So um, 2011, we were 212. And in 2012, we were 220. So we're always right there at that mark. Uh, we seem to be very consistent with the money that we're putting into the capital. We do expect the collection numbers to come down, but that marker that the state gives us of greater than five. Uh, or that, yeah, I mean, percentage wise, I, mean, I don't we're know. We'll all ever. of our infrastructure is submerged in water. How do you, that's exactly <laughs> you right. deal with this? That's exactly right. So if you want to compare us to Colorado, yeah. You know, no, they, they, they have, they move the same amount of water, but with maybe 12 pump stations. In the city of right. Atlanta, where I was, I only had 48. Right. So it just, it's geographics. Um, how, how we fare, we actually fare very well with the items that we cannot control. Okay. So with the money, now this number will continue to improve because the improvements on the wastewater treatment plant are just about ready to go out to bid. So that's a majority of our overflows is coming from that because we've done so well in improving the collection system that all that water now is moving. We're to sending it to it and it can't handle it. At this that's point. right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. So that will improve. Those numbers will come down as as we progress into the uh, further into the construction. We need about another two more reporting years to see okay. a, a good a good number change. Right. And, and I mean, and obviously you can't put that much money in the ground that fast. And this is you this can. is a process that's going to take several years. That's correct. Um, okay, great. Well, I appreciate the you're kind of a recap in that for us and we're hopefully looking to get better numbers and I guess you said a better credit score. That's <laughs> with right. the DEQ. A lower credit. We don't want to be in bad bad water with the DEQ, no. that's for sure. That's right. Um, but we appreciate the the administration's effort and I mean, people have seen you know, uh, the sewers improvements all over the city. Matter of fact, if you drive down West Loyola, you see this big pipe that's, you know, getting ready to be, you know, tied in and replace the old outdated uh, force main that we have there. And so people are seeing, you know, their their tax monies at work. And, that's right. And, and, they, they, and, and once again, it's not pretty money. This stuff goes underground and you don't see it, but at least we're taking care of our infrastructure. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, let me just add that, uh, we uh, have had three or four meetings with the DEQ, and um, I hope this doesn't, I don't have to contradict myself, but in the 
they have been very, very impressed in Canada's actions and very impressed in, in the fashion in which we've shown that in, we've had good faith and everything and that these projects will all be completed. So I, I look forward to meeting with them again and hopefully it's on the, it's, it's, uh, we get a good rating because I know that they know that we're really working hard to correct all the problems that we had and believe me, we had many. And, no, and, sure. um, and in, in especially in District 5, as, and especially since Katrina. So, um, yeah. you know, we all pushed for the, for the more, uh, more soil repairs and DEQ. I think we're one of their fair haired boys right now. Right. So um, I'm looking forward to talking to them. Ma Thank you. Madam Chair, I have one more thing. And just to let the public know that this city had such a good credit rating, okay, that we were able to get these loans at what point? Zero point what? 0 0.95, which is pretty incredible. So, um, um, and, and, we, and I tell you what, we, we borrowed every dime they could give us, I know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Denopoulos, and thank you. Um, please vote. Hearing no other discussion. <clears throat> Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 13C. Is a resolution authorizing the City Council for the City of Kenner to hold a public hearing to determine whether or not the building located at 1701 Roosevelt Boulevard, Kenner, Louisiana, should not be repaired or demolished? No. Um, motion by. Wait, which, which number is that? 13C. It's on the supplemental agenda this evening. Uh -huh. Supplemental. Yes, okay. Got passed? It did. Okay, a motion by Councilman Stagney. Second by Councilwoman Brannigan. Councilman Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. This is a property at 1701 Roosevelt that uh, has been unoccupied since uh, Katrina in deplorable condition. The, uh, the homeowner, I think August of last year, came in and said she was gonna demo the, the house. And I think the only thing left is a cap to sewer line and uh, a neighbor who contacted me regarding this said that the that the city of Kenner dropped the ball. And as I checked through code, that was not the case at all. And I think the homeowner is making excuses. So I'm trying to get this on the agenda to force the issue. I think they will demolish the house himself, itself, but uh, it's important that we put some pressure to make them do that. Ms. Vallow? And Councilman, we have done that. We contacted the property owner personally. She had contracted with a, a a, a demolition crew in September of last year. So we kind of put the pressure on her and in turn she has, has contacted the demolition company and there is apparently a hold up with the, with the getting the plumber to come out and apply for a permit for the sewer cap. But I think putting the pressure on, we'll, we'll, we'll see that. Yeah, I think once she gets shortly. a copy of this, yes. I think and she was, she was informed that we were putting it on for tonight as well, so. Good, thank you. And I'm, I'd ask for your support. Thank you, Madam Thank President. Thank you, Councilman Stagney. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 14 is items removed from the consent agenda. We have none. Item 15 is acceptance of contracts and similar matters approved by the mayor. Item 15A is summary ordinance number 11,646, an ordinance approving change order number one final to the contract with Task Force LLC regarding repairs to the Lake Town Fishing Pier for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Motion by Councilman Reno, second by Councilwoman Black. Councilman Reno, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Maricoli, could you just give us a brief overview on this additional costs for this contract? What, uh, what this is is um, some of its lighting uh, some parts of the lighting that had to be changed, and some of uh, the brackets and things. Uh, there's some additional concrete work that was added um, that kind of, it, it, when they when they added the, when we extended the ramp, it basically added some areas where they needed to have concrete to make it safe for everybody to go up. So it's things that, to so that nature, there's some wiring issues on the, on the electrical. That, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. thank Councilman Denopoulos. Ken, um, these additional repairs, is this, is this going to be paid from FEMA or is this going to be paid out of uh, um, Lake Town monies, I guess? Well, this is basically what we did is the Lake Town monies. It was, was to, to 75 25 to, to pay this. 
Okay. But we, it, it is going to be all to, uh, with Hurricane Isaac. So, so, it, so it, I mean, yeah. most of this discharge will be offset, is what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Let me just add while they're speaking, uh, Mr. Dinopoulos, uh, this is all paid for, for the hotel motels for Lake Town. And um, they're, we're paying, paying for it, but FEMA is going to reimburse us for the monies that we have expended. So it, it is, in fact, being paid by, uh, by FEMA. And again, we did some mitigation to this, so it, hopefully this should never happen in the future. And let me tell you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say go out tonight or even tomorrow, but the, the pier is beautiful. So when the weather gets nice, uh, it's very, very nice. Take, your, your, take a little lunch and your, and your, your rig and your pole like, and go out there because they have uh, a beautiful facility for you to fish from. I guarantee you'll have people out there tonight also. Really? So they, you they're won't hard, catch me out hardcore there. Hardcore fishermen. <laughs> you won't catch me out there. But uh, it is a beautiful um, uh, addition. And, you know, and it's a very well done job. Thank you, Councilman Reno, for overseeing all of that, too. Mr. Dinopoulos, are you done? Okay. Would you per turn off your light? Okay. Okay, please vote. <clears throat> Madam Chairman, motion passes 7 0. Item 15B <clears throat> is summary ordinance number 11,647, an ordinance authorizing the purchase of 10 2014 Ford Police Interceptor Utility Vehicles from Lamar Ford, utilizing Jefferson Parish Contract Number 55-00013770, and an amount of $274,130 for the Kenner Police Department. Motion by Councilman Stagney, second by Councilwoman DeFranches. Uh, Councilwoman DeFrancis, you have the floor. <coughs> Chief, would you like to make a comment on this, please? Yeah, these are just uh, <coughs> 10 of the smaller SUVs. Uh, same thing Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office uses. Uh, we're going to try these and see if these uh, accommodate the police officers better. They should have a little bit more room, certainly more storage space. But, uh, you know, the cars are equipped with computers and cages and a lot of equipment in there, so we're looking for something that's a little, little roomier for the officers and for the, uh, the guests that we put in our back seats. Thank you. Councilman Stagney, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Chief, you're buying this off the Jefferson Parish contract, aren't you? Correct. It's a Jefferson Parish contract purchase. Yeah. One of the great things about this is we're buying from the big store right here in Kenner. So we're, uh, we're giving some business. Uh, our tax dollars are going to a, a good local business. So uh, this is a great, uh, great deal for us. Thank you, Madam President. And I hope I'm never a guest in that police car. <laughs> Councilman Dinopoulos, you have the floor. Chief, the, um, the money, is there any of this coming from the drug forfeiture money? <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's coming from the drug account. Uh, we have been utilizing that, though, yes. Is that where it's coming from? Uh, yeah. Yes. So basically, the taxpayers really aren't paying us, but the drug the drug lords are paying for this, basically, and they got caught, <laughs> drug <lords>. which is okay. <laughs> right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Dinopoulos. Here and no other discussion. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 6-0. Council Member Dinopoulos is abstaining. Item 15C is summary ordinance number 11,648, an ordinance accepting the lowest responsive bid received from ProTech sales for the purchase of one Cobb Ham Freja covert audio video surveillance recording system or equal in accordance with letter bid number 13-1508 in the amount of $12,848 for the Kenner Police Department. Motion by Councilwoman Brannigan, second by Councilwoman DeFranches. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15D is summary ordinance number 11,649, an ordinance 
accepting the response of bid received from New Arrow Industries Incorporated doing business as Arrow Fence for an annual contract to furnish and install fencing in accordance with seal bid number 13-6185 and an amount not to exceed $150,000 per year for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Motion by Councilman Stagney, second by Councilman Carroll. Councilman Stagney, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, purchasing Department contacted at least nine vendors on this. Uh, we had three responses, and this was the lowest, uh, and I think we're getting a good price on this. Thank you, Madam President. Hearing no other discussion, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 16 is ordinances and resolutions in summary for first reading. Item 16A is an ordinance correcting a typographical error in ordinance number 9808 adopted November 6, 2008. Item 16B is an ordinance authorizing the utilization of state contract number 409716 to purchase various types of ammunition from Barney's Incorporated, Barney's Firearms on an as-needed basis not to exceed $20,000 per year for the Kenner Police Department. Item 16C is an ordinance authorizing the purchase of one 2014 Ford Taurus four-door sedan from Lamar Ford utilizing Jefferson Parish contract number 55-00137770 and an amount of $20,808 for the Kenner Police Department. Item 16D is an ordinance accepting the response of bid received from Bliss Products and Services Incorporated in the amount of $14,658 to furnish and install modern shade playground cover at Wood Lake Playground in accordance with seal bid number 13-6190 for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 16E is an ordinance accepting the response of bid received from W.J. Blosher Company, LLC, for an annual contract to supply labor only for electrical work in accordance with seal bid number 13-6191 and an amount not to exceed $200,000 per year for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 16F is an ordinance ratifying an emergency repair of the Wood Lake Gymnasium heating system in the amount of $6,100 by Beacon Air Condition Heating and Refrigeration Incorporated for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 16G is an ordinance accepting the lowest responsive bid received from Direct Source Home Renovations, LLC, for an annual contract to furnish and install vinyl siding and related exterior improvements on an as-needed basis in accordance with seal bid number 13-6193 and an amount not to exceed $125,000 per year for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 16H is an ordinance approving the lease of a certain portion of ground fronting Veterans Boulevard and measuring 100 feet by 43 feet adjacent to lots Y-9C and Y-9D square 329 and 330 Highway Park Subdivision, Kenner Jefferson Parish, Louisiana, which said property is owned by the City of Kenner. Item 17 is reports from the Council and our special committees. Councilwoman Brannigan, you have the floor. Oh. Um, I got something in my office today, uh, and I thought that it would be appropriate if we would do it this evening at this time. It was from the mayor's office, a recognition for Councilmember Carroll, who just I just got his attention. And this is from the mayor's office for us to present to you your 20-year service pin uh, for the city of Kenner. So congratulations. And I know that Councilman uh, Carroll has not been on the council for 20 years, so I'm going to ask him to explain to all of us how he came about getting this 20-year service pin. It, Wait a minute, let me give you a... And it's his birthday week, I might add, so this is a big week. Okay, Councilman Carroll, explain. 
Well, thank you, ma Madam President. Also, I'd like to thank the mayor and all administration for the pen. I appreciate that. And you are correct. I have not been on the council for 20 years. I think they're counting the time when I work for the Recreation Department as a gym supervisor and one of the assistants in the program. So if you count all that in this, then I guess that adds up to 20. But uh, more than that, I'd like to thank all of the people that I've worked with in the, in the Kenner, the city of Kenner, especially the Kenner Recreation Department. These are individuals who give their time for the ones that work. It's not about the money, it's about the children and the families and the relationships that they establish. I think it's important for us to have a recreation department. Uh, we are trying to improve the city with all the things going on. This is something I think that adds to the city of Kenner and I think we have the best recreation department in the whole entire state. It's proved over and over again. So thank everybody, there are as much part of this as I am, and hopefully I can get another 20 years doing something. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Madam you. President. We wanted to make it special for you tonight, Gregory, because uh, not too many of us get that far. <laughs> um, but anyway, just to show you that he hasn't been sitting back on his, on his laurels the last 20 years. He's always been involved and always participating with the children. And uh, we, the public just, decided to give him some notoriety and elect him to office, and I think he's doing a great job. Councilman Carroll, I'm gonna clear your name from the Thank you, Madam President. I was, I was gonna say, you know, you must have gotten a pen for the time you spent in recreation. Um, the last several years, he's been a councilman, but if Gregory is not at his house, I promise you he's gonna be on a playground or in a gym in his district. Uh, there have been times when he's coached a team, he's uh, fixed a problem in the gym. Uh, he spends a lot of time over there, and he said it, it's about the families and the families that he's known for many, many, many years and the kids of those family members. So great job, congratulations, Gregory. I know y'all can't see it, but he's turning red. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, we also have, I've been asked to remind, uh, as a reminder that Kenner City Hall will be sponsoring a blood drive on Monday, February 3rd. So we won't be having a meeting um, and by that time, so I just would like people to mark it off on your calendars, beginning at 12 p.m. and ending at 345. Uh, you can contact Jennifer Driscoll um, at 468-7219. I know you're all writing this down as I speak. And we'd like you to sign up for specific times. Be sure to eat a good meal before donating and bring your picture ID. Of course, you know this is a very worthwhile cause and hopefully um, the good Lord will never see that you need to have these services, but there are people out there who do need your blood. So I certainly hope that you would uh, volunteer. The blood mobile will be located at Kenner City Hall in the large park parking lot behind Building C. And that is on Monday, February 3rd, 2014, from 12 p.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. So uh, I just want to make sure that everybody knows about that. Uh, Mr. Dinopoulos, you have the floor. I'd also like to mention that the St. Elizabeth Ann C. Men's Club is hosting a car show, antique cars, muscle cars. It's going to be actually at the St. Elizabeth School site in the back blacktop, correct? And I think it's from registration starts about 9 to about 11. And then, uh, Joe, you get some more details on this? Because I was kind of a little hairy on it. But um, the, uh, I tell you, it's a great event. I think it's $30 registration fee. Um, they feed you incredibly and I tell you what we had some incredible incredible cars there last year um, had something like about 80 cars there and I know uh, our, our our director of, of car maintenance and fleet maintenance is going to be there today tomorrow and I'm gonna try to have one of my rare cars over there as well so um, get out there and see these nice cars and support a good effort and the, and the um, and what the money goes to our children in that district thank you thank you mr. Dinopoulos would you take your mic off, please? Councilman Carroll, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, as everyone knows, this past Monday was Dr. Martin Luther King 
holiday celebration tribute. And it was the 29th occasion for the city of Kenner that we as a city has celebrated it uh, much longer than even some states. And it was a fantastic event. The weather was beautiful. Uh, a large crowd of people that were there. I'd like to first thank the mayor for coming out and giving some kind words uh, at the event. I'd like to thank Councilman Denopolis, Councilwoman DeFrancis, Councilman Raynard, and Councilman Stagney for coming to the event. I mean, it, and, and also uh, State Representative, no, he wasn't there. But for the elected officials to come out, especially for this, it shows a lot that the people care for not only the people who have a real connection with Dr. King. I mean, there's three different people. There's people my parents and grandparents have one appreciation. There's myself, have a different appreciation. Then there's my children, all of our children, who Dr. King is more or less, for them, he, he's, a, he's an icon of something that they, that they haven't, wasn't, didn't know. So it's good when we come out and do that. It's also good for the people who help support it. And I don't wanna be remiss and not to mention them because the other sponsors to be able to give the water, the cakes, the cookies, the, the, and all of the things that we need to, to make this to sec successful. Uh, Gin Care, Winn-Dixie Groceries, Sam's Club, Costco's, Coca-Cola, and Kentwood all donated something to make the event what it was. There are also a number of other departments, recreation, the fire department with the Smokehouse Children's International Health Clinic, Kenner Public Housing Administration, Walmart Vision Center, Boy Scouts of America, Just Kids for Dental, America Health, AFLAC Insurance, Home Depot, ITT Technical Institute, People's Health, Office Depot, Diabetes Management and Supplies, Ashina Blood Mobile, and Resources for Independent Living. All of these people participated I think this is the reason why we as a city of Kenner can be proud of everyone that supports us in different events that we do. This is one that's real significant for the community and I think everybody enjoyed it, the different churches, the guest speaker and everybody participated was real nice and I wanna thank all of everyone who helped put this together, especially my assistant Kelly Harper who runs crazy during that time putting it together, you know, bugging everybody and trying to get things done. So I wanna thank her especially uh, for that. Uh, also, I'd like to thank Judge Johnson and Judge June Daringsbird. Also, for June's Daringsbird, a Kenner girl, Kenner girl, I'd like to let everyone know that not only was she there to represent, and the mayor gave a nice, a nice, a nice appreciation for June being a Kenner girl from Kenner, the things that she's have accomplished. And if you haven't heard, Judge June Barry Daringsbird has been elected the 21st Judicial District Court Chief Judge. And it just goes to show you the amount of talent that we have in the city of Kenner and the talent that will be coming more out of Kenner with the number of things going on like the mayor's council and all those things. So please be supportive of all these individuals. June, you're a fantastic person. You represent the city of Kenner well, and we appreciate that. I also, one last thing in closing, we talked earlier about the flag raising. Here's another individual, Mr. Ernest Wesley lifelong resident of Kenner. I know Jeannie knows the entire family because she knows everybody in the city of Kenner. He has been elected the mayor in the Zulu organization. And this is something proud to be proud of because there are members all over the country and to be chosen by your peers to represent and this position as mayor is fantastic to represent the city of Kenner. And I like to thank a number of people, the recreation departments, especially Miss Bonnie for today Ms. Vallo just coming in, giving her a hot potato, I guess you could say. Uh, some of the things had to get done, Lee, the attorney, the police chief, everybody, some of the things that they had to get in place at the last minute, and I apologize for that, but it just goes to show the coordination that we have working together. So we look forward to that event, February the 2nd, the first Saturday in February, and hopefully everybody can come out and have a nice good time. Thank you, Madam President. And I think Paris President, Jefferson Paris President John Young. Yes, was John Young. President. I know I'm going to forget someone. Okay. Right. Councilman Stagney, you had the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, one of the things with Councilman Carroll, he added a new wrinkle to the MLK March, and every year since he's been on the council, he recognizes two, I call them community heroes. Uh, this year, he recognized Gus Sonier who is the longest serving Kenner employee. 
Uh, I know when I played ball at nine or 10 years old, he was uh, coaching, refereeing, and working for the city back then. Uh, and he kind of comes out of South Kenner. And oh, the other one was Arthur Lawson out of the Lincoln Manor subdivision, who works for the city. I'm sorry, Arthur Jones. I'm, don't ask me why I got the Gretna police chief on my mind. But uh, Arthur Jones, uh, he never ceases to amaze me with his outreach in the community. My boy plays 11 and 12 year old basketball and the last game that they had, Buddy Lawson and uh, Lincoln played each other and Arthur brought both teams out to midcourt, had everybody take a knee and they said a prayer. So he's a good role model for these young kids and, and Gregory, that's something really nice that you've done to the community, recognizing those people who help young people get further in life. works for Ms. Terrell in community uh, development. Uh, also, I wanted to make, uh, make note that uh, the, the application period for the Kenner Discovery Health Sciences Academy is still open and will close on February 14th. And uh, I failed to give this to Councilman Carroll, but there is a meeting Tuesday, January 28th at the MLK Resource Center if anybody wants further information. And again, it closes on 2-14-14, and that's been a, uh, a real success story. Last, uh, last meeting, I wasn't able to be here. I was contacted by uh, Mr. Zewi who spoke. Uh, he requested something about public records and he said there were still four outstanding requests out there that he made. Uh, I was just gonna ask the city attorney's office to, to please look at that. He contacted me and I wanted to follow up on that. Um, if you'd like to comment. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we, we have researched um, the outstanding records requests and we're preparing a written response to Mr. Zeewee. Um, but he's, feel, you know, he can call the office to talk to us directly about it, but, um, but he will get a response. Okay, thank you. Also, Mr. Benetti spoke and, and asked if the council members knew anything about a payment to St. Charles Parish on the um, special airport tax. I, I did not know anything about it. And I, and I think one of the questions that he had when I looked at the meeting, uh, I don't think it was ever answered. Why didn't we, why did we withhold payments starting in 2009? There were some issues with the reports that we were working out. Okay. And we worked them out and, and made the payment. Issues between us and St. Charles? Well, we, we, get, we get reports from the sheriff's office on our sales tax and we use that to calculate what we pay them and, and there were a few issues that we worked out and made the payment. Okay. Um, and I've received several calls on the, uh, the work that's been done on Roosevelt Boulevard from basically veterans all the way down to airline. We got another set of money in there. That is complete, so the Paths of Progress Road uh, program has worked well over there. And I think everybody's fairly happy with that. Additionally, on West Metairie between Williams and Roosevelt, Roosevelt Boulevard, that is completed as well. Uh, and you know, I, I can't tell you what a, what a difference it makes uh, having, and I know Jeannie doesn't like this, the uh, asphalt overlay on top of the concrete. I, I'm, I'm a proponent. Uh, it just makes for a much better ride. It looks nice. For a while. Um, now, <laughs> Mr. Jose Gonzalez, I sent you an email regarding uh, a U-turn lane at uh, Tennessee, basically at West Esplanade, uh, the one U-turn uh, on my side, it's Tennessee. I don't remember the street or if it's, if it's close to a street on Councilman Reno's side. But we extended uh, that U-turn because cars were actually making the U-turn, going up the one way, going into Tennessee, going against traffic. And I know uh, even with police being out there, they still continue to do it. So we extended the U-turn lane and put some reflectors up there. I just wanna make sure, and, and the reason I'm doing it is because those people at that corner and the corner just uh, east of that, uh, cars have gone through their backyards too. So we, we put a guardrail, and uh, I wanna make sure that they're going to um, honor at least extending that U-turn lane to, to dissuade the motorists from going up the one way. Uh, as soon as I heard from you regarding that matter, I sent an email to the program manager with instructions to replace in kind. I haven't heard from them, but I'm sure that they will replace in kind. Okay, good. Um, and, and how long, is it another month and a half or two months, or does it go through April, that portion of the 
Weather permitting, unfortunately, is going to be April. April. Okay. Mid-April. Okay, good. And, and I've gotten about three calls on the Veterans Boulevard, Indiana, uh, the lift station, the force main. Uh, that should be completed sometime in February? Uh, I think it's going to be later than February. I think that was a six-month project, so it's going to be later. I don't, I don't have the, the information. But Did they change the scope? I thought originally it was three months. Supposed to no, start in October. I think it's longer than three months. Okay. I, I don't think it's going to be finished in, in February. Okay. So please bear with us. That's, that's the delay you have on Veterans Boulevard going east and westbound. Uh, I think that's all I have. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman Stagney. Um, Councilwoman DeFrancis, you had the floor. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, I know you and I both sent um, emails to the DOTD about people coming from the mall down 32nd Street to make that turn onto Williams Boulevard about some of the problems that are being experienced because people in the right-hand lane are cutting across to go to the I-10. Have you heard anything back from the DOTD yet? I did talk to the gentleman personally, by the way, and because I ha take that route so often, I told him exactly what the problems uh, that I observed, uh, what they were. And he said he would look into it, and he was very open to our ideas on how to address that situation. I was just curious if he has gotten back to you since that conversation. No, no, I have not. I have not heard from them, but I, I sent my stack, which is the district engineer, mm -hmm. you know, an email concerning your concerns. And, okay. and that's, that's not the only complaint that I have received. I think I have received another complaint, you know, a few months back. So my stack is fully aware of the potential problem. However, my stack is in the process of retiring. Uh, so therefore, uh, in all likelihood, I will be sending another email uh, whenever I find out who's his replacement or her replacement is going to be. Actually, it was the other gentleman, I think, who will be taking his place who actually called me, by the way. I'm not going to mention him right now, but I haven't, you know, as I said, we spoke on the phone on some of those issues. So I just, uh, I really just wondered if perhaps you had heard more no, since that time. Not yet, but I'll follow up on it. Thank you. And if I may, I also was asked to make an announcement. Um, Chateau Estates Garden Club, which, by the way, maintains 13 gardens in Chateau so that we, the, the rest of the people in the city, do not have to maintain those gardens. So that takes the burden off the city. Um, the Garden Club is sponsoring a Celebrity Chef's Night fundraiser on Saturday, January the 25th. They will have dinner, door prizes, etc., at Chateau Country Club. Uh, it will be held in the dining room on the first floor, and I'm not going to take much time, but if anyone is interested, it's $50 a person. There are also sponsorships available, and if anyone needing more information may call, contact Colleen Tassin at 504-628-2186. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Francis. Councilman Dinopoulos. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Earlier this week, I was um, I actually was delighted to go to a luncheon. It was sponsored by the K Kenner Professional Business Association. And at that meeting, um, Mayor Yenny was actually did his uh, State of the City speech at that uh, event. And hopefully some people are looking at KTV right now and seeing some of the rebroadcasts of it because um, if, you, if you live in Kenner, it's going to make you feel good about living in Kenner. And if you don't, you're going to want to live in Kenner. There's a lot going to happen in Kenner, and not only now, but in the next uh, few years, and it's going to be, Kenner's going to explode on the map as being a destination city. There's no doubt about it. Mayor, I thought you did a great job in your, in your, in your speech and where Kenner is and where we're going, and I think, it, you know, hopefully people watch the TV and see because, you know, if you don't own a house in Kenner right now, you're going to want to. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dinopoulos. And uh, just a couple more things I wanted to add. Last week, when our last meeting when I was acting mayor, uh, with that question from Mr. Bonetti came up, and I thought that uh, Mr. McConnell gave him an explanation um, as to what was happening in response to your question. Uh, am I correct on that, Mr. Bonetti? Did, did Mr. Uh, McConnell, our finance director, answer your question? Okay. Okay. He, he, he told him about the delay that there's still some things they have to go over before they could give you a final, final answer on that, but it is forthcoming. 
And second of all, uh, if you were living under a rock or you don't watch TV or you didn't, uh, don't get the newspaper, on January 15th, all of us went to the press conference sponsored by the New Orleans Aviation Board in regards to the airport expansion. People, let me tell you, it's going to be a beautiful facility. $826 million will be put into this new facility, and um, it's going to be people friendly. And as uh, uh, Mayor Moon Landrew, uh, Moon Landrew, living in the past again, as Mayor Mitch, he was there, as Mayor uh, Mitch Landrew said at the time, that if a, a woman going with three children is traveling by herself, this airport is the ideal place for her because everything is going to be taken in consideration to make it easier for her to get through your terminals, get through your gates, and, do get, uh, and the gates will, t will double or triple the capacities that it used to. Um, it's gonna be a beautiful facility um, and probably one of the nicest facilities. And if you've ever traveled into other city, cities and seen their airports and said, gee, I wish ours could be like that, ours is gonna surpass it. So it's not scheduled to be complete until April of um, 2018 It'll just miss the Super Bowl, uh, but it, that's the completion date uh, when they'll be cutting the ribbon on that. So, um, as I said, it is, Kenner's gonna be proud of this airport because we're one of the few cities where we have an airport owned by another municipality but located in a different uh, wow. municipality. So, it's gonna be a, something that Kenner can be proud of as well as the city of New Orleans. So, thank you for paying attention. All right, Council Clerk. Item 18 is new business. We have none. We have none. Item 19 is unfinished business or motions to remove, motions to reconsider or remove from a tabled position. We have none. Item 20 is persons wishing to address the council on special subject matters. Yes, we do. We have three. Mr. Al Morello. Al Morello, 4260 East Loyola Drive, 5th District, 42 years. I got some comments uh, relative to uh, this Linfield. Hunter and Junior's contract. Uh, I want to direct these comments to you, Councilman Stagney, uh, that you made in here on uh, at the December 19th meeting. Uh, first of all, your proposal to amend that contract uh, so no one up here would benefit or probably off any subcontracting work that was brought into the city. Uh, let me just say this. Campaign contributions from that firm, Councilman Stagney. The mayor received $12,000 from the firm, the, the, the uh, president and the vice president. You, Councilman Stagney, received 2,500. Councilwoman DeFranchez, 500. Councilman Keith Raynor, 500. And Councilman Carroll, 250. So as far as I'm concerned, Councilman Stagney, you and the colleagues, you, are, you and your colleagues that I just mentioned, y'all benefited off that contract when you took the money. Now, I want to say this to you, Councilwoman DeFranchez. You can put a spin on those no-bid contracts any way you want. You can spin it any way you want. The fact of the matter is that this council has a up, straight up or down vote on awarding those type of contracts. Okay? Now. Let's see, what else I got here? I think that's about it. I think I covered it all. Oh, in closing, I wanna thank you, Councilwoman Michelle Brannigan, chairing this meeting, the last meeting, you was a chairwoman, and uh, trying to get my question answered relative to the bar in this show back here. Uh, hopefully one day it might be answered, but I wanna thank you again because you did. You were the only one that did try to, attempted to get an answer for me. Now, anybody got any comments, any questions for me? Thank you. Mr. Larry Daigle. <coughs> Who that? Who that? He's got written by his name. Larry Daigle, 4128 Tulane Drive, Kennel. Uh, I just want to thank Ms. Maria DeFranchez for that nice little letter she <coughs> sent through the mail to Karen and I for Christmas. And Councilman Dinapolis, kids love the uh, toys. You donated to us for Christmas. And I want to tell all of y'all, I wasn't here at the last meeting, Karen, I was under the weather, we've been sick. Happy New Year to everybody. And Councilman Stagney, you uh, this deal about cutting grass and blowing the grass into the drain, didn't you bring that up? Why, why can the uh, 
city of Kenna workers edge of the neutral grounds and cut the grass and leave the grass in the street. Wouldn't the water and the wind blow that in the drain too, instead of picking it up? Now, we passed, I, I authored an ordinance and we passed an ordinance that you couldn't uh, blow gl uh, grass clippings into the, uh, into the drainage lines. Um, the administration, Oh yeah, into the streets and then, because yeah. it's gonna go into the drainage lines eventually. So yeah, we passed an ordinance on that. Have I been uh, ecstatic on the enforcement? Not necessarily. We have a new code director. You know, when the summer comes by, you can see contractors for a lot of the businesses doing that. So far as overseeing our own employees, uh, you know, I'm sure the administration will have somebody out there to see if, if our own employees are doing anything that would, that would violate that in any way. I, I know they don't want it, I don't want it. Uh, it doesn't look good, it's not aesthetically pleasing, and again, it gets into our drainage lines and it can cause some problems. Right, because when they cut the neutral grounds and edge on, along the neutral grounds, they just leave the grass in the street. Yeah, they need, that need, you know, and Mayor, that's, that's not, a, that, Mr. Daigle, that's not our employees, that's the contractor who does that work. Mm -hmm. um, one of the good things about that contract, as you know, uh, probably for three or four years, I was griping that we'd cut the grass but we wouldn't edge. It's like getting a haircut but not trimming around your ears. Right. So they, the administration put that in the contract. Uh, the grass cutting looks very nice, but uh, I'm sure the administration will get on the contractor to make sure that that's not just laying around in the street. Okay, my last but not Thank least, you. I want to wish all of y'all good luck for the upcoming campaign. And Jeannie, I know Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman DeFrancis has something to say. Thank you, Council <laughs> President. Um, Mr. Morello, I found it a little strange that you used the word spin since I'm the one who said at the last meeting exactly what you just said, that we have an up and down vote. And that is the truth. And I said that at the last meeting, that we have an up and down vote. I also said that we don't negotiate the contract, but we do have obligations with that up and down vote. And if you remember, some of the things I said were as follows. Number one, we should do our homework. We should investigate the company you know, who, who will have the contract to make sure it's a reputable co company, to make sure in the, work, the past, if it's done work in the city of Kenner, that the work has been done properly, that it had no major issues or major complaints. I also said that in addition to doing that, we should make sure that the contract is a viable contract monetarily. In other words, if you remember when I talked about those two acts that I mentioned in the past, that although we don't, uh, we can't put it out to bid because of the of those two of those two uh, again, um, the Bennett and the and the other one that I mentioned. Uh, I also said that you can you rank the firms one, two, and three, which is very permissible. The one being the one that has the best reputation, et cetera, has the competency to do the work, and so on. And only then you start negotiating the contract on a monetary basis. Now, if that contract comes to us and we feel that it's uh, you know, way too high based on other similar work that was done by other reputable companies, then we have an obligation to vote no. And at that point, it goes back to the administration and they can start the negotiations again with one of the other ranked companies. But I believe I went through that exactly step by step at the last meeting. So I don't see how that would be considered a spin because I'm simply stating facts according to the law. And, and we do, I will repeat until I'm sick and tired of saying it, that we have a moral obligation, in my opinion, to make sure we're prepared and when we cast that vote that we do it based on the facts. The facts as presented to us and the facts that we were able to, to collect con concerning the contract in the company. Thank you. Okay, anybody Jim, else wanna speak? Uh, oh. I wanna respond to- Councilman Brannigan, Brannigan has her vote on first, so I'll I'll give the floor to Councilor Branigan. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Ms. Morell, I was thinking about you Saturday night because we went to the movie. Have you been over there? No. And on the door at the movie, it said that they are applying with the state and that there is a 15 day, I mean, we knew, we, they, they built the bar. We assumed that that's what was happening. Um, there was a 15 day waiting period or they had to post that for 15 days to alert people that they would be applying for a permit. So. They self, you know, uh, they said themselves with that notice on the door that they are applying for a liquor permit, which we, 
I had anticipated. I just had not, you know, typically they have to apply with the state before they can get any clearance from the city. So I was thinking about you Saturday night. There you go. Okay, Councilman Stagner, you had the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Just to respond to Mr. Morello, I, I want to correct what I think is a false and misleading statement. I, I benefited in no way from the contract. You were at the meeting. I voted against it. The amendments that I wanted to put on were good government amendments that was in response to what I've heard from people out there thinking that well, people on this council, people in the administration, subcontractors of them are going to benefit in some kind of way over the life of the contract. And, and I do believe that those kind of things should go into it. Now, it could have been delayed and the administration inserted at the next meeting. It, I, that's why I voted against it. But I got a contribution from him back in 2009 for a 1998 race. So I didn't benefit in any way. And campaign contributions in the state of Louisiana are legal. The things that I was talking about was trying to tighten up uh, a somewhat lax state ethics law tightening it up so that people, watchdogs like yourself, can see that, you know, we're just doing the business of the citizens of our city and we're not benefiting from it. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman Stagney. Uh, hearing no other, uh, co any conversation, um, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>